Hello, this is Fail Asian Person. Um, today I'm going to talk about something a little bit harder because Soul Eater said that this stuff is basic to him. So I'm going to show you something called the Bernoulli's equation and I'm going to show you how to derive this equation. Now, what this equation is about, first of all, is it talks about the pressure, speed, and the height of something at point one and it shows you it's equal to the same things at point two. You don't really need to know about what it means. You can Wikipedia or Google it if you wanted to. But yeah, pressure, speed and height, the relationships of point one two. It's about a fluid flowing through a pipe. So this is a pipe. Yes, very badly drawn pipe. And say water is flowing through it. So you measure the pressure at point one, the speed of the water up to point one and how high it is. And you can work out what the pressure and speed of the water would be at point two, knowing this equation. Now the first thing you need to know is something called the work theorem. And what the work theorem is about is that the work done is equal to the difference of kinetic energy, which I will call EKF, F for final, minus EK initial. Um, if you remember from physics that kinetic energy can be written as a half mv squared. So instead of saying EKF minus EKI, I could just say a half mv2 squared minus a half mv1 squared, where 2, v2 is the final speed and v1 is the initial speed. And now I'm going to just write this down without any explanation here. First of all, um, you might remember from physics that v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2as. You had several equations relating initial speed, final speed, acceleration and distances. I don't know if you remember any of those equations but this is one of them. You will need this. So you know the work done is equal to force times distance but you also know Newton's second law. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So you can make that substitution and say the work done is equal to mass times acceleration times distance. And now, this equation I wrote up earlier, this part is the acceleration times distance. So you can rearrange it to give acceleration times distance is equal to final speed squared minus initial speed squared divided by 2. Substitute that in you get work done is equal to mass times all of that. And if you look carefully and break the brackets, what you end up getting is a half mv2 squared minus a half mv1 squared. So that's how you derive this work theorem, that the work done is equal to the difference of kinetic energy. So once you know that, we can start on the Bernoulli's equation. So first of all, to derive it, it is just a balance of energies with work done and kinetic energy. So first of all we draw this pipe. Now notice, although it's very badly drawn, the area at the second point is smaller than the area at point one. And it's kind of climbing up so let's see. The height here is smaller than the height there. And this we'll call area two, area one. The area is the cross sectional area of the pipe. Okay. So water is flowing into this pipe and flowing out of the pipe, you know, it's flowing through this pipe. So given any time, if I say one second passes, then water would have flown so far. So let's give it a time of delta t. After a time delta t has passed, which is a very short amount of time, water would have flown from here to somewhere like here. So water would have travelled a distance a certain distance which I'll call delta x. I'll call this delta x1 because it's distance travelled into the pipe. And now we can work out what mass of the water is flown into the pipe by first of all working out the volume of water that is flowed in. Now volume is simply the cross-sectional area times how far it's travelled which is delta x1 in this case. I hope you follow that's the volume. It should be simple. Um, can't see any reason why we don't follow that. 
And now, to get the mass of that water, you simply multiply it by density, which is denoted by the Greek letter rho. So you have rho a delta x is equal to the mass entered, the pipe. Now, water is incompressible, or we will assume it to be incompressible. That means in a given volume, you can only have so much water in it. You can't squeeze water in a volume. So how much volume has went in the pipe? The same amount of volume must have went out the pipe as well. So this mass of water is the same as this mass of water which exited the pipe. And that will also have travelled a distance of delta x, but I'll call this delta x too. Because the distance travelled out here is not the same as the distance here. Because the areas are different, you see. The volume is the same, but the height is different. But what you can say is rho a2 delta x2 is equal to the same mass that x exited. So they have the same mass or same volume. Now you need to work out what all the work done on the water is in this pipe so that you can equate that to the difference of kinetic energies. One of the work done on this water is the pressure. Work done on pressure is once again force times distance. The pressure forces is P1 A1, that's the pressure acting on this area, times the distance, which is delta X1, minus P2 A2 delta X2, because it's the work done difference. Now, if you look at that, delta X1, delta X2, they aren't the same distance, as I said, so there's no cancellation that you can do at all, you think. But you can do something very smart and it tidies up the mass. If you multiply the top line by the density, rho, and also divide by rho to keep it the same thing, you can now group things together. Rho A delta X is the mass. So by multiplying by rho and dividing by rho, you can now rewrite this as the change in mass times pressure 1 minus the change in mass times pressure 2 divided by rho simply by just multiplying and dividing by the same thing and tidying up. Second thing that does work is gravity. And you can do this by doing the negative of the potential energies. Now you should know that potential energy is mgh. So the potential energy there is mgh2 minus this. Now, if you think about it, you're gaining potential energy, which is going against gravity. And that's why you put this as a negative. That's the work done by gravity, because you're going against gravity, you're going up the slope. So work done by gravity is this, with a minus sign. And if you're wondering why it's this triangle M, which is delta M, it's because the mass isn't a constant. The mass depends on how much time has passed. You know, if it was a lot of time passed, then this would be a lot of mass. If it was a small amount of time passed, it would be a small amount of mass. That's why it's delta M and not just M. Okay? So you now have all the work done. The total work done is equal to work done by the pressure plus the work done by gravity, which is this. So you have the work done. So now all you have to do is write down what the kinetic energies are. The kinetic energies of final is simply a half m v2 squared, the velocity at point 2, minus a half m v1 squared, the velocity at 1. That's the difference of kinetic energies. Now, if you remember work theorem, difference in kinetic energies is equal to the work done. So I'll take a new page and rewrite this. So remember, all the work done is delta m p1 minus delta m p2 over rho. Then add on the gravities, which is plus delta mgh1 minus delta mgh2. And that is equal to the kinetic energies. I can't really fit here, but you understand the idea. Now if you look at every single term here, they each have a delta m. So you can just cancel through every delta m on this equation and you end up getting P1 
minus P2 over rho plus GH1 minus GH2 equals a half V2 squared minus a half V1 squared. Now simply rearrange, bring all the 1s to one side and bring all the point twos to the other side. You will get P1 over rho plus V1 squared over 2 plus GH1 is equal to P2 over rho plus V2 squared over 2 plus GH2. And that is the Bernoulli's equation. So I hope that you followed that. If you don't, then don't worry, because this isn't anything close to what you'll have to do in high school. This is, you know, I know this because I'm doing, you know, mechanical engineering in second year, so you don't have to worry about this. This is just to test if you really know maths, because to be honest with you, you haven't actually, I haven't done anything that you shouldn't be able to do here. I mean, it's just simple physics with the work done, and then simple manipulation of algebra to derive this. So you should actually follow this, but if you don't understand it, don't worry about it. Um, this is purely just because of Soul Eater's comment saying that this is basic for me, and I just wanted to see if you could follow this. So I hope you're enjoying your maths, I hope you pass our exams, and I'll see you next time.